My whole life, I think, has been based on a challenge, and I'm very much have a fighter's instinct in that way. Welcome back to Throwback Thursdays. I'm Tim Blanks. Two words: Naomi Campbell. Don't need to say much more than that. The superest of the supermodels, though she'd probably have something to say about that. Thank you very much. Do you want to talk to us? She's no, often been a lightning rod of controversy. She's very outspoken. She's a very forceful personality. Johnny or Versace always said to me, whether they write about you good or bad, who cares they're writing? When we went back into our vaults, we discovered a, this tape from 1999, which I think shows a much more rounded woman than the tabloids allowed us to see. You know, I was growing up in this industry in front of the whole world in the public eye, and probably may not even have known how to just say what I wanted, but I knew that I had to ask for what I wanted because if I didn't, I wasn't going to get it. Now, you, you have been very opinionated about the fashion industry. Do you still think it's a racist business? Well, I haven't seen a black model on the cover of a magazine in America in the last year and a half, so... Well, you know, I have faith, but it's moving really slowly, you see. Now, why do you think that is? I don't know. I don't know if anyone's even realised. You see all races in music and in dance and theatre, so why can't we see it in fashion? But we're not. What are you saying? You don't put a black on a cosmopolitan for the last... 10 years, so black women aren't going to pick it up. They still do. She did put herself out there as a sort of touch paper for the whole issue of racism and fashion, but she had some good friends helping her. You know, Linda's part of my life, and Linda helped me in my career so much. She said to designers like Dodge Cabana, have you ever seen Naomi Campbell walk? Have you ever walked her? You've never put a black girl in Dodge Cabana. You must take her. And then listen to Linda. And she helped me. We used to help each other. And that's what's missing, I feel, from the models today, that the camaraderie is not the same as it was for my group of girls. If you think about the relationships that define top models' careers, the relationship that, that I actually do come back to with Naomi is the one with the designer, Azadine Liar. He's just, he's the best. I mean, this man took care of me and protected me from 16 years old on. I lived with him for four years. I have my room still in his house. He shows it to everyone. And he has concerns like a real father. <laughs> Does he discipline you? Oh, God, yeah. He tells me when he's mad, why he's mad, and what for. There can't be many men who can do that, though. I don't like men that I can walk all over. I just don't. It doesn't work for me. The occasion for this interview in 1999 was the launch of a perfume, the first of many, that Naomi put her name to. How would you describe yourself as you're expressed in a perfume? I describe myself as mysterious, yes, I can be. Independent, yes, I can be. Outspoken, yes, I can be. Hardworking, yes, I am. What about all the sexy stuff? I can never mention that. Like, ah, that's not for me to say. Maybe more than any other model, Naomi Campbell's career will leave a legacy of controversy and commitment and activism. She's been dominating the industry for nearly 30 years. She was discovered as a 15-year-old schoolgirl in London. And I saw her just the other day walking in a Diane von Furstenberg show. So there's nothing nostalgic when we talk about her, because I think there's a lot more to come in this particular story. Do you have a favorite Naomi story? I'd love to hear it. This has been Throwback Thursdays, and I'm Tim Blanks. <laughs>